Hello, and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. Today's video is sponsored by our Amazon affiliate link, which you'll see in the comments section below. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about pH, the importance of proper pH for your houseplants, and we're going to test this plant soil, this plant soil, and see what the pH level is at. So this is a Dracaena, this is a corn plant, and this Dracaena, as you'll see, is having a few little problems here. Now, the, the, the Dracaena did need a repotting, and it took me a little time to get to that, which, you know, life steps in, right? So I did get this guy repotted a while back. Still not kind of showing some funky signs and symptoms here, which I'm suspecting are from improper soil pH. Dracaenas, the corn plants, and all the Dracaena family like their soil on the acidic, uh, excuse me, on the alkaline side. So there is the pH scale uh, runs from the from one end to the other, and with seven being neutral, over seven is more alkaline, under seven is more acidic. I'm guessing that this plant is probably a little bit too, has soil that's a little too acidic for this for the, for the corn plant. And there are ways to, to rectify that. However, I would wanna know first if the pH is in fact off. Now, the reason that it is so important for your soil pH to be correct is this. You can be fertilizing your plants. You can be watering them correctly. You can be giving them the right light. You can be seeing to them and talking to them. But if the soil pH is incorrect for that species of plant, the plant is going to have problems. Some of the problems it will present is kind of this funky growth with the looking leaves here, the splatters in the leaves. Now this new leaf is doing better, so that is a good sign, but it's still not as healthy as, I, as, as it really should be. The, uh, so what happens is you feed the plant, and you think, well, I'm feeding the plant. Well, if the soil pH is off, the plant cannot take up the nutrients that you are feeding it. So it's basically like giving the plant vitamins that are never digested. So that's why it's really important that the pH is correct. Other signs of pH being off are if the leaves grow, but the leaves are kind of funkily shaped or they're small, they just don't want to grow right. Uh, if you have flowering and fruiting plants, they won't flower fruit. Or if they do flower fruit, the flowers look kind of misshapen and, and stunted and the fruit may come, but it's very small. So those are all signs of, of improper pH. Get the pH balanced and the plant will do well. And the pH testing is something I suggest when you've tried everything else. You're making sure you're watering correctly. You're making sure the plant has proper light. You're making sure the plant has proper humidity. You're making sure that you fertilize on a regular basis, watering is right, etc. So I am going to show you how to do a pH test right now. The, there are pH meters you can stick into the soil. However, those really have to be properly calibrated, and this is this is for a water test actually that we're going to be doing. Those have to be properly calibrated. They they the calibration can go off easily. Then you'd have to have it recalibrated. Not all of them are the same. They're not. They're just not quite as accurate as I like. Although it is a good first test, but if you want to make double triple sure, I suggest doing a soil um, test. And these, this particular one came with other things where I could test for nitrogen and, and phosphorus and potassium, et cetera. So this I'm going to do for the pH. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to first, the pH, we're going to test the pH level in the soil itself. So what I need to do for that is I need to get some of this soil out of the plant and put it and, um, into this for testing. So when you do soil testing like that, what you want to do is you do want to check various areas in the soil itself. So what we want to do here is I want to get some soil from uh, various areas around here, and then I it will be mixed up. 
Uh, that is okay because I'm going, what I'm trying for here is an overall representation of the soil pH. Okay, so I have this dowel here that I'm going to use to loosen up a little bit on top here so I can easily get to some of this soil. And then I'm going to take this spoon here and there is a, a, a fill line here. So fill with soil. So I'm going to fill up to that point. So I'm going to take a little bit here, a little bit from back here. Until I get it filled. So I'm getting, trying to get around every area. It doesn't hurt too if you want to dig down a little bit with this. Um, since this is newer soil, I'm not as concerned, but if this, the plant has been in the soil for a while, you probably want to dig down a little bit and maybe take some soil from deeper down too. So you're just, what you're aiming for, like I mentioned, is a really good representation there. And it looks like I've got the right amount of soil in there. You want to make sure to tap it a little bit to give it some air. I mean, to get rid of the air pockets in there so you make sure you have enough. Looks like I need a little bit more soil here. So I'm gonna do that and then check it. Okay, so that is, looks like it's filled to the line very nicely. Okay, now they, these test kits, which are pretty inexpensive, come with pills that have certain chemical in them to, to, check, the, to check the level of pH and the, and the other minerals as mentioned. So I need to get, without spilling it, this powder, into this here. And that is what we're doing right now. Okay, next step. That's, I got all the powder out. Next step is to put in up to the fill with water line. What I'm gonna put in there is water. However, it's very important that you use distilled water. Distilled water is neutral. It's at seven. It's neither alkaline or acidic. It's very important. If you go and use your alkaline or acidic water, you're going to throw this test kit, all this testing all off. Even reverse osmosis, I don't suggest because some, um, depending on how, if you have really alkaline water, actually like I do here, it can still throw it off. So distilled is your best bet. You're going through all this trouble. Best to do it correctly here. So I'm going to fill this up to the fill line, which I'm just about at. Okay, I think we're there, good. Now, I'm gonna put the cap on, if I can find it, there it is. And I'm going to shake it vigorously to get it all mixed up, to get the powder, the chemical testing agent in there, the soil and everything. Okay, and now what you want to do, what's going to happen is the water is going to turn a certain color after some time. And then I'll be able to check the scale here and see if it's alkaline, if it's, if it's acidic, etc. Uh, but we have to wait at least five minutes for that to occur. So we will check back then. Okay. So we have waited about 15 minutes, and I would suggest waiting the minimum five, but even better, 15, 20 minutes, just to make sure. So you can see with this, and you see the chart over here that tells you the pH. So we've got at the top pH is a dark, it's a 7.5, then you got neutral right under that. And then under that, it starts to get brown and more, um, more orangey. So, What's going on here is that, and it will depend on the test as to what colors they're using, but what's going on here, as you can see, is that this is pretty neutral. So this soil is at neutral, which isn't surprising because potting soils tend to be at neutral when you get them, and this was recently repotted. So the problem with this, however, is that the Dracaena requires a more alkaline soil, so I would have wanted it ideally to be in the darker green range. So that being said, I am going to want to make the soil slightly more alkaline. You can do that by adding lime to the soil according to package directions. So I will be doing that in a future, future video. 
And then you would wait at least a month and retest the soil and see if you're in the right range for that plant. So that is what we are going to do after this. At least for right now, we know uh, for sure that this plant is uh, having some problems. One, one of the reasons having some problems, um, and probably most of the reasons having some problems, is that the soil pH is incorrect. And this, as I mentioned, really helps you to have this information so you know where to go from there. Thanks for stopping by today. Please leave any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video.